Greetings and salutations. Welcome to TFI. So as some of you know, along with doing this YouTube gig, I also work in the real world. And one of my more recent activities was to spec up the new laptops and workstations for our team of, I don't know, a hundred and something engineers, mostly mechanical engineers, but mixed disciplines. The team use mostly Autodesk Inventor, a bit of AutoCAD here, a bit of Nastran there, mate, a bit of MathCAD, a bit of ANSYS, a bit of CFD to mix back, mate, but we're an Autodesk account mostly. But the laptops and workstations were specifically specified to power Autodesk Inventor. Good job, I know a thing or two about that, mate. But before that, this video is proudly sponsored by TFI Platinum Sponsor, Parametric Limited, offering expert 2D and 3D contract design services and systems management to clients in all locations based on your requirements. See the link in the description to learn more. So the laptops that we're going with are these ones here, mate. This is the Dell 7540 Precision Mobile Workstation 15 inch. This is the one we're kitting the office out with and we're handing out over to all of the engineers. So before I get started, mate, just as a heads up, look. Uh, I'm not particularly all that interested, if I'm honest, in giving a well-balanced, full-rounded review of this thing because look, the world doesn't need another guy passing opinions on whether or not it's got the right amount of USB ports and you know the screen color calibration settings and how comfortable it is to type on. Look, that's not my fight. That's not my battle. What I'm best at, what I've got more experience at than most people is putting together uh, specifying and then evaluating the best performing laptops, mobile workstations and desktops for Autodesk Inventor and generally Autodesk's 3D CAD applications. That's what I'm best at, that's where my remit starts and that's where it ends and that's what I'm focusing on in this video. So with that being said mate, the logic that's been applied in this video is specifically for Autodesk Inventor but it can also be applied to Fusion 360. However, this unit is a bit overkill and expensive for Fusion 360, but it'll be an absolute baller. Same applies to AutoCAD and its verticals. It'll be good for that. Bit overkill, but good. Uh, and also Revit as well. Similar requirements to Autodesk Inventor. What it's not going to be suitable for though, this particular unit is 3D Studio Max, Maya, the likes of the Alias product line and V-RED. So just keep that in mind as we're going through. And speaking of being suitable, as with most pre-builds, it's possible to spec this thing eight ways to Sunday, mate. It's got more potential configurations than a Porsche 911. It's, it's actually possible if you don't know what you're doing, if you pick the wrong one, for this to be essentially useless and feeble across the board. It's all about the spec. So if you want to pick the right mobile workstation for a desk inventor, this is the spec to go for. Right then, let's talk about them specs, mate. What I've went for and why I've picked them. So I've went with 32 gig of system RAM across the board for all the engineers in all the mobile workstations. The reason I went for 32 gig of RAM is I found that that is the sweet spot for our engineers based off of the data sets that they work on uh, after evaluating what they've been doing over the last couple of years. It's not too much, it's not too little, it's just right for us. And that's the most important bit, it's just right for us. Based on what you're doing, if you need more than 32 gig of RAM, by all means put in more. These mobile workstations will take much more than 32 gig of RAM, so put in more if you need to, you'll pay for it, but put in more if you need to. If you need less than 32 gig of RAM, put in 16. Don't go less than 16, it shouldn't even be an option in a mobile workstation, but 16 minimum and then maybe put that extra money elsewhere in the build. For storage, normally in a mobile workstation, what I would do is buy a single smaller solid state drive and then buy a secondary mechanical drive as like a data storage drive. I haven't done that this time around. Instead, what I've went with is a single, slightly larger solid state drive and just left it with that. So I've spec'd in a single terabyte M.2 NVMe PCI Express solid state drive. It was delivered with a PC601 SK Hynix solid state drive. And like I said at the start, I'm not particularly interested in how well it read and writes and benchmarking it and its latency and all that kind of stuff. I don't care. It's a solid state drive. As long as the applications run, it's fine. Our 3D card applications on bottlenecked by storage. So as long as it does the job, that's good enough for me. Graphics card, mate. This one was tricky. Uh, and I've went with the NVIDIA Quadro RTX 3000 mobile GPU. It's not the most powerful mobile GPU in the world mid-range, kind of lower to mid-range tier GPU, but good enough for Autodesk Inventor, which isn't GPU accelerated. And that was the reason why I went for this one. Over the course of a working day, most mechanical engineers who use Autodesk Inventor, who use AutoCAD, who use simulation, the tasks that they're doing are not GPU accelerated. So giving them a laptop with a powerful, expensive graphics card in is not money well spent in that area. So given a, a laptop with a Quadro RTX 3000, 
it's enough horsepower there that if they ever did need to do a job which does require a graphics card there with decent horsepower it's got it there when it needs it it's got that quadro it's got rt cores it's got tensor cores it's got rtx it's there when they need it but for the most part if they're not using it it's not necessarily the end of the world it's no crying shame so mobile quadro rtx 3000 for the graphics card in the dell precision 7540 mobile workstation so the star of the show mate the headlining act is the cpu so which is the one to go for right well at the time of filming the one to go for is the intel mobile xeon e2286m and be blown away mate by the turbulence of its magnificence as it brings eight cores and 16 threads of xeon stability and efficiency hitting a blisteringly fast five gigahertz on a single core and given that most of autodesk's 3d cad applications including autodesk inventor and fusion 360 they're still heavily reliant on single core clock frequency to perform. And the fact that this hits five gigahertz makes this the best option there is for those 3D CAD applications. But in addition to that, the fact that it has eight cores makes this ideal for any workflows that you might do, which can utilize multi cores and multi threads. So it's just a great all rounder, best for single core workflows and also multi threaded workflows as well. And putting that to the test, here it is, the Dell Precision Mobile Workstation 7540 with that Intel Xeon E2286M scoring a 15.31 in the Autodesk Inventor Bench Test, putting it right out in front, way ahead of any other mobile workstations that I've previously tested. In fact, astonishingly, this thing keeps up with even the flagship desktop i9 processors, meaning that a laptop equipped with a Xeon with the whole pro driver, pro support thing, and the, the company will probably buy you it thing, is actually now banging heads with and clashing swords with the full-on hardcore DIY enthusiast desktop PCs for Autodesk Inventor. But to be clear, none of this is because it's a Dell, right? It's it's the Xeon. I just want to make this pretty clear. Now, now is not the time to go into like the hows and the whys of why the Xeon's perfectly suitable. But probably covered some of that, but just Remember, it's not its not that it's a Dell, it's the Xeon that's doing this. Just remember that when you're specifying this. As for the rest of the Precision 7540, in my opinion, Dell have smashed the aesthetics here, mate. Do you know what? I took quite a bit of crap in a previous video because I dared to criticize the appearance of Lenovo's current ThinkPad line. But do you know what? It can matter. The aesthetics can matter. If you don't think that you've been judged before, good or bad, based on what laptop that you've slammed out on a table in a meeting you've been in, I don't know what to tell you. I, the amount of people I remember even a dozen years later because their laptop stood out and struck up an ice-breaking conversation when you first met. Like, for example, Autodesk tech sales staff knocking about with bright red anodized Dell laptops years ago. It's certainly, obviously, not the be-all and end-all, but it can set a good and lasting first impression at the right time, and it just helps to be classy. And this is classy. This is not. This is what they call forgettable. Uh, the 1080p display in this is nothing special, but to be honest, mate, most users that use something like this hook it up to a second monitor anyway. You know, an engineering laptop screens aren't that important, but uh, the keyboard's a bit mushy. It's strong, but uh, hey, honestly, who cares? Uh, the battery, the battery life was surprisingly impressive for something of, with this power. Uh, the rest of the ports and connectivity, like I said at the start, mate, it's just not my concern. It's not my battle. You're more than capable of reading up on all of that stuff on the sales page, and I'm not selling this, so it's not a review unit. But finally, mate, the graphics. And let me put it this way. If you know beforehand that you're going to be doing some rendering on a regular basis using an application that supports RTX, like a Keyshot, uh, VRED, that kind of thing, then the, the Quadro RTX 3000 that I've put in this thing is, it's okay. It's a solid middle of the class performer for the Turing generation, and it falls about on par with a desktop RTX 2060, and it comfortably beats out the previous generation high-end desktop Quadro P5000 in every tested scenario, which is pretty impressive for a laptop, but it's, yeah, around middle of the road for this generation. However, where this begins to come undone is VR. If you're looking for a good all-rounder laptop to take with you to a trade show, for example, and power an Oculus Rift S, for example, yeah, it isn't so good, mate, not so good. I mean, this is far from an extensive test, but in almost all scenes, I was struggling to hit 45 frames per second at native resolution in the Rift S with no anti-aliasing. It felt uncomfortable, sluggish. I, look, I just wouldn't want to hook a client into this. So if, if VR is on the cards, if that's something that you want to do, then yeah, someone needs to send me a laptop with a higher end GPU in and I'll, I'll t test that and let you know. But this one, non bueno, mate, not good.
And that is what it's all about, mate. Make good what you need to be good. It's a balancing act. Put your money in what you need, compromise in other areas. Uh, and in this case, it's all about that scrumptious Xeon. So this is my new engineering laptop of choice for Autodesk Inventor. And that'll do it for me, mate. If you want to buy this laptop, mate, I'll try and link it in the description if I can find it on Amazon. But at the moment, I can't find it anywhere. So you might have to go to Dell's website if you want to snap it up. But eh, for now, just consider joining the channel as a member if you want to support TFI. Link is in the description. Join button is down there. You get access to exclusive Autodesk Inventor videos moving forward, as well as access to my weekly live stream called The Support Desk. That's going to be scheduled mostly on Fridays. There's one tomorrow. Uh, and it's free for everyone to view. But it's a members only chat. So if you want to ask questions and interact, that's a members only perk. So that should be on the front page of the channel. Thanks very much to Parametric as well for being the TFI Platinum sponsor through the membership program for this video. Their link is in the description down below. If you want to go and check out Parametric and the projects that they've worked on and get in touch with them, link is in the description. So, mate, that's it. That's all I've got. Thanks very much. See you in the next one. Toodles.